Good evening, this is Lottie Rayner and you're watching the Newsroom. Deadline season has well and truly hit campus, but that's not the only deadline on the horizon, as Parliament finalises Brexit. Talon and Ed will discuss this for you. Hello and welcome back to the UK politics section of XCV's The Newsroom. We're here once again with Talon, talking a little bit about what's been in the news recently. So, we have um, Brexit, that's been quite a big thing recently, and also some things also about sexual harassment and assault within the House of Lords. So, um, first things first, Brexit, everyone's favourite topic, keeps coming up, we can't escape it, no matter how hard we may try. Um, Theresa May has recently come out with a, a statement saying that they are in the end game of Brexit, of Brexit, uh, building the Brexit plan. Um, what does this actually mean? Does it have any substance to it? You know, what's your take on it? So today we're recording this on the 13th of November. This is a very crucial week for Theresa May and the cabinet at large. The reason why she said that we're coming to an end game is because this week the cabinet will finally decide on whether they agree with the Brexit deal or not. So that's the cabinet, not the wider EU, EU 50 states, 50 plus states. The people um, have to agree to it. Exactly. Yeah. It is the cabinet because Theresa May's idea was that if we waited a few weeks, that maybe the EU would budge on the Northern Ireland border issue, which has been the number one thing holding the negotiations back at the moment. But she's come to the conclusion that we might as well just agree on what cabinet um, thinks about the deal and then we can fight those battles later. Yeah, so we've also had um, some interesting things about um, resignations in the party, some potential disunity and potential troubles for Theresa May. Specifically, Joe Johnson resigning last week was potentially quite a blow to um, both May and her party at large. You know, what's the wider significance of this? So this is very significant because especially at this point in time where the deal is being done, it's now a concern that when the deal is agreed or comes to agreement at cabinet in 48 hours time, maybe even, that some ministers just won't agree and therefore a large group of them will resign. And this will be absolutely terrible because there are talks at the moment that people like Andrea Leadsom or Esther McVeigh, individuals who are very loyal to Theresa May, are going to resign over this issue and over what the deal contains. And therefore there will be a disconnect in the party and in cabinet leading to us asking the question, is Theresa May going to be the one to lead us out of the EU? So potentially even a leadership contest, if it's, it, it, would that be on the cards or is that a bit too far-fetched? I think at the moment it would be very risky to have a leadership contest at this point in time because of how much is going on. But definitely we hear about this every two or three weeks that someone wants to challenge Theresa May. So those rumours would definitely come up again. Okay. Uh, so final thing on Brexit before we move on. Um, there's been a lot of stuff in the, in the press about um, a no deal Brexit and what that means. Um, I, I don't think I've seen a single um, you know, week where front page hasn't included. No deal Brexit will mean and then, you know, a uh, bad thing, basically. Yeah, any old issue that they could just throw out. Um, what's, what's the likelihood and significance of, you know, the idea of a no-deal Brexit right now uh, in the thinking of the Conservative Party? So a no-deal Brexit is definitely still on the cards. And what's interesting is that the Cabinet agreed last week that this deal, would the withdrawal agreement, would be agreed by Cabinet by the end of November. And that's at an advantage to Theresa May, because what she now has on her side is a short amount of time. Therefore, there won't be enough time for people to properly consider the implications of a no-deal Brexit. And I know you might say, but they've had over two years to think about what a no-deal Brexit will mean. But when push comes to shove and the two agreements are in front of them, do we go with what we have or do we go with a no-deal Brexit? Will those ministers have the guts to actually vote for a no-deal? So the main issue that's been in the news recently uh, is peers voting on the suspension of Lord Leicester on the grounds that he allegedly sexually harassed uh, women's rights campaigner Jasmine de Sanguera. So what would the wider significance be if he were to be suspended? Um, and, you know, what's the general issue around sexual harassment, assault and bullying within Parliament right now? The wider significance of him actually being suspended would be the fact that last year there was the scandal that came out to do with sexual harassment and bullying in Westminster. And from then, three reports and recommendations came out to try and change the code of conduct and the culture of Parliament. So this would be quite significant because it could perhaps show that there has actually been a change towards the culture of sexual harassment and issues like that in Parliament and that people are actually willing to take action and not hide it underneath the carpet anymore. 
Um, so is there anything else um, interesting about this story? Obviously, peers are scheduled to vote for this on Thursday. Is there anything else you can tell us about this? So one point of significance is the idea that if this peer is suspended, he'll be suspended until 2022. And that's of note because no peer has been suspended for that long since World War II. So it perhaps shows a shift in um, ideals like I mentioned before. OK, cool. So thank you very much, Tyler. Uh, that was it for XEV's uh, The Newsroom's UK Politics segment. Um, that's all from us this week. Thank you to Helen and Ed for a very insightful and exciting look into politics. Next up, we have Yudi Wu taking us down to K House to explore our very own Soul Choir. Hi, my name is Yudi, reporting for the XTV Newsroom. Today, we're here at the K House with Soul Choir Society. They're currently doing a rehearsal in here. Let's just go into there and see what's happening. Soul is passing over. The storm is passing over, the storm is passing over, hallelujah. So we're joined by the president of Soul Choir Lizzie and the producer of the Soul Choir Larry. So could you guys please tell us more about Soul Choir, what is Soul Choir about? Uh, so we're a 40 person choir and we also have a, a joining band, which is our soul band. And we basically, we gig around Exeter, um, we rehearse about two times a week. Um, and yeah, we have a range of gigs all throughout the year. Yeah, I mean, above all things, we are a community. You know, we look out for each other and we have a group of people from all over the university and all different age groups. I mean, look at me, you know, I, I look like someone's dad. Um, <laughs> and yet we are all bonded by the fact that we love to make some noise. I need to stop saying joyful noise because that makes people think we are a religious choir, which we're not, but um, yeah. That sounds great. Uh, what is today's rehearsal about? Uh, so we're rehearsing for our uh, Christmas gig, which is the 1st of December. So we did a few, we did a run through through our six choir songs, and then we've also got a joint uh, band rehearsal upstairs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great, awesome. Could you please tell us more about how no members can gain involved in your society? Uh, so they basically just got to, uh, they got to follow us throughout the year. Um, I run the social media, so on Instagram and Facebook, you'll get regular updates of what we're doing. Uh, and then we have two different intakes. So we have one at the beginning of the year uh, where we advertise around Freshers Week, do the usual thing, throwing leaflets at hungover freshers on the hill. Um, and then we also have a second intake in January where you have a variety of different little spots opening up in the choir and sometimes we just need to bulk it out a little bit so um, yeah just keep an eye out on the social media beyond anything and obviously come to the gigs please great, <laughs> um, great. thank you uh, Larry and Lizzie for joining us today also thank you so choir for joining us today um, I'm you the reporting for the newsroom now we'll get back to Lottie <laughs> Thank you, Yudi, and we wish Soul Choir the best of luck in the next performance. If anything in the show took your interest, please have a look at the description below. Tune in in two weeks' time for the next episode of The Newsroom. I've been Lottie Rayner, and this is The Newsroom. <laughs>